This video is going to discuss using the do loop repetition structure. We've been using the for next repetition structure, but the do loop repetition structure is much more powerful. And we'll see how that works here with some basic code. So the first thing you'll notice in this code is that it's pretty typical. We declare some variables. We initialize a couple of those variables. And what we're going to do here is we're going to ask the user to input a value within the range of our minimum and maximum number. Well, we'd like to make sure that we get a valid number. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a do loop. Now, the key idea behind a do loop is that it will continue to repeat or loop for an indeterminate number of times. The for next statement goes around a fixed number of times. And so it's a very useful structure when you know exactly how many times you want to repeat something. But in this particular case, we don't know how many times the user is going to screw up and input a value that's outside of the allowed range. So the do loop structure is a key repetition structure, or the key repetition structure, when you don't know how many times the loop has to repeat. That is the big idea here. The for next structure is for when you know how many times it's going to repeat. I often refer to that as a counting loop. Whereas the do loop structure is when you don't know how many times the loop may need to go around. So in this case, let's just take a look at the syntax. Of course, you start with the word do. And then you have the body of your loop structure. And you end it with the keyword loop. So that's why they call it a do loop, of course. And then we need one more keyword. You'll notice I have this keyword until here. Well, it's saying do the loop until this test becomes true. So when you use the until keyword, you then have to follow it up with a test that some point in time is going to be true. If you have a test that's never going to be true, therefore the loop would never quit, that's a bad thing in a program because then your program just gets stuck in that infinite loop and it will never continue to the next statement below the loop. So that's a very dangerous thing about the do loops. If you write a poorly configured do loop, you can have an infinite loop and that's a very subtle and sometimes difficult bug to find in your program. Well, let's take a look at this one. Notice what this test says. The test says do this until the number is greater than or equal to min and the number, keyword and here, and the number is less than or equal to max. So that basically says it has to be in the range from 1 to 10 in this case. So let's go ahead and run this and just see how this works. Hit F5. And the program is running. And I'm going to enter the number 0. And I got an error message. Now, I have no idea why I got an error message, because I think I did something wrong on my keyboard here. But let's hit the debug and see what line it died on. Well, right there, it died on a type mismatch. And what that means to me is that I typed in something that wasn't a number, and it tried to store it into this numeric variable. So let's try that again. I'll reset the program and hit F5. And this time, I'm going to type in a 0 and hit Enter. And it says, oops, type a number from 1 to 10. Let's try 11 and hit Enter. Same error, but I don't really get an error. It just prompts me again. And this time, let's type in a 4 and hit Enter. And it liked the number 4 because it was within the range. So let's click OK. So this is a fairly simple example, but it did have one little problem. When the user typed in something incorrect, it didn't really tell them they did anything incorrect. It just went around again and prompted them. So let's take a look at the next piece of code. This piece of code is essentially identical to the prior piece with one s small difference. You'll notice that we have the same declarations, the same initialization. We have the same do, and we also have the same input statement. And down here, we have the same exact loop until, and then the message box. But we've added one slight little extra piece here. We've added an if statement. And the if statement checks to see if the number is less than min or the number is greater than max. Because if this is the case, we want to kind of warn the person with a message box that their number is out of range. So the primary difference here is that we're just being a little bit more user friendly. But again, notice this test on the if statement. It's testing to see if the number is less than min or if the number is greater than max. So this or keyword allows us to link together two conditions so we can have those two conditions in a single test. And let me run this and see how this one works. Hit F5. 
enter a number from 1 to 10. I'll enter the 0 again. And it tells me the input value is out of range. OK, let's try that 11 again. Same error message, of course, out of range. And finally, let's go ahead and enter the number 6 this time. And it works like a champ. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you about the do loop and how you can write the do loop. So let's take a look at one more piece of code. This particular piece of code is, again, almost identical. You'll notice the declarations, the initialization, the do statement, the input box. In this case, we have the if, end if. So we have all this code is exactly the same. But down here on our loop statement, or the ending of the do loop, things are a little bit different. You'll notice instead of using the keyword until, I've used the keyword while. Now, the keyword while kind of flips things around. What the keyword while does is it says, OK, we're going to loop while the test is true. Now, remember before when we had the until, the do loop would quit if the test was true. And the loop would continue if the test was false. Well, by putting the keyword while in here instead of the keyword until, we kind of turn that around. This loop will quit as soon as this is false. The test is false. But it will continue while the test is true. And it kind of reads nicely, do loop while this test is true. Now what I kind of like about this example is that the test we have on our if else, or just our if statement up here, is exactly the same test we're using down here on the while. So it actually reads a little bit more simply, a little bit easier maybe to understand. Now you can use either the until or the while. It's just whichever one makes the most sense to you when you're reading the code. They are both pretty much do a very similar thing. They either let the loop continue or they let the loop stop. Now remember, you want to make sure your tests and what's going on inside your loop are somehow going to let it stop. In this particular case, the user is inputting. So this particular piece of code is generally going to stop at some point because the user is going to get tired of typing a wrong answer. And finally, they'll probably enter the correct value. But there are other cases where it doesn't have anything to do with user input. And you have to be very thoughtful about what's going on inside the loop so that at some point, in the case of this while, that test has better be false, because if the test is always true, this loop goes forever. And that's not a good thing in a program, because then it never gets to execute that next piece of code, and the program seems like it's in an infinite loop and kind of locked up. Well, let's take a look at a little program that you can write that has some use of the do loop structure. Now, this little program will be a little guessing game. And the idea behind this program is that you want to have your program pick a random number and store that in a variable. Then using a do loop, you will ask the user to input their guess. And you'll store that in a variable. And then you'll have an if, else, if, else structure. And the if statement's going to say, if the user's input equals the magic number, You'll tell them, you know, good job or something along those lines. Else if that's not true, else if the number is too large or larger than the magic number, if the user's input is larger than the magic number, then you want to print a prompt to the screen that says too high. Else, of course, you'll print a prompt to the screen that says too low, because that's the only other option. So you put this whole thing in a do loop until the user's magic the user's input is equal to the magic number. So see if you can work on that program and get that running.